Now let's talk about specialty inks and printing methods. So what I'm talking about here are novelty inks or novelty printing methods. The first one I have here is a gold foil. You can get foil in a range of colors. Foil can be somewhat expensive, so the bigger you print, the more it costs. With foil, you're screen printing an adhesive, and the foil comes in rolls or sheets, so you're applying the foil to the adhesive to adhere it to the shirt. This is metallic ink. It's not quite as shiny as foil, but it does cost a lot less. For now, metallic ink is only screen print. You can't do it with direct to garment And that leads us to glitter, and glitter is what it sounds like. It's just a glitter ink that can be screen printed. And this one is a gel ink combined with glitter. So you have a glitter gel. And then there's puff ink. Puff ink, you'll notice, looks puffy. It's got kind of a rounded edge where it puffs up. And here's one of my favorite examples of puff ink. They took basically some art that looked like a rope. And when the puff ink is applied, it puffs up and you still have that rope texture. But that rope texture is in the spacing of the art. Really cool effect. In contrast to puff ink is high density ink. The big difference you'll notice is high density ink has more of a sharp edge. You don't see a lot of high density ink these days. I think people prefer not feeling the ink or applique on the shirt, but used in moderation, it can be a really nice effect. I do like the combination of this line art with the high density ink here. To me, this looks like two layers of high density ink. You can even screen print regular Plastisol ink on top of high density ink. And here's what metallic ink looks like screen printed on top of a high density ink. And here we have suede ink. Suede ink has a suede leather, sort of soft feel to the print. This is known as flock or flocking. And this style of print is pretty out of fashion right now. But the way flocking works is an adhesive is screen printed onto the shirt and then little fibers are applied to that adhesive. So you get kind of a, a fuzzy effect. But there are still cool ways to do flocking. You can do a logo like this. And this flock has a gradient color applied to it. And I like this technique. This is a regular plastisol print with the letters. And then inside is sort of a distressed area that has the flocking. You can even apply flocking to a puff ink. And this is how that looks. This is glow in the dark ink. And the thing about glow in the dark is it, it'll have a little bit of a green tint to it. And even though it's transparent, you'll see that green tint during the day. So this is solar ink. And the way it works is you have the shirt on the left and that's what it looks like indoors. But as soon as you go outside and UV ultraviolet light hits it from the sun, all these colors that are screen printed there that were invisible before, brighten up and it's a really dramatic effect. If this solar ink is printed on a white shirt, you will not see it at all until you go into the sun. So you could have a totally blank t-shirt that looks blank indoors and when you go outside, the colors brighten up. Really cool ink. This is an old school heat transfer. These are just heat transfer letters. Airbrush shirts were really common back in the 70s and 80s, but here's a current day Mowgli shirt that's got a really nice airbrush. Crackle ink. I'm sure you've seen lots of t-shirts with a cracked ink look. And the reason people do this is to emulate vintage washed and worn shirts that were printed with Plastisol. With Crackle ink, it's an additive added to the Plastisol that makes it more brittle, and that way you get a cracked effect. The other way to get that effect is to use a texture in your art. And I think this is kind of a bad example, actually. It just doesn't look that authentic as far as the cracks go. By the way, if you're looking for good textures, I have a collection of cracked ink textures called Plastisol, and that's on my website, thevectorlab.com. These ones are really good. They were created by scanning the ink on old vintage shirts. The thing about crackle ink is you do not have any control over how the ink cracks. The nice thing about that is each t-shirt will look different. But what I've seen a lot of people do lately is add in a texture in the art 
and combine that with a crackle ink. Here's a Rourke shirt. You can see the diagonal texture is in the art, but then the other cracks are in the crackle ink. Pretty cool. This is an even better example where you'll notice the larger, more vertical cracks. Those are in the art, and then the smaller cracks are in the crackle ink. This is one of the best examples I've seen of the texture and crackle ink combination. This technique is really hot right now. It's called reverse printing. With reverse printing, what you're doing is flipping the t-shirt inside out, and you're pushing that ink through the shirt so it shows up on the other side. And it's got a really nice natural texture to it. Very appealing. Here's a couple more examples of reverse print. You'll get different results with reverse printing depending on how light or dark the shirt is. Typically with a dark shirt, you need to press through more ink to get it to show up. And on the left side here, it looks like they pushed through a lot more ink than the shirt on the right. So there's a ton of other specialty inks and methods that I didn't cover here, but those are kind of the main ones. And what you'll want to do is when you go to your screen printer, ask them what they can do. So every screen printer will have different capabilities as far as specialty inks and special effects.